All right, diving a little bit further into GPT-4's ability to interpret theory of mind. This is, if you want to watch the previous three videos that I've done on this topic, please go ahead and watch those. They're in the same playlist. But it's based off of the sparks of artificial general intelligence, early experiments with GPT-4 paper. In section six here, you see they talk about theory of mind and how this is applicable. So I did a couple of these tests. I mirrored one of the tests they have here. I did two other tests. And I've sort of determined in these experiments that GPT-4 has at least the perspective, the reasoning perspective, to think outside of itself for about a six, seven, or eight-year-old. So I wanted to take it into the adolescent realm. So one test that's often used to determine an adult's ability to understand reasoning from the perspective of another person is this one that's called the Interpersonal Reactivity Index, or the IRI. It's a self-report questionnaire, which is kind of nice because I could have GPT-4 actually take this questionnaire. And it actually assesses in four different components of empathy. And so we're really getting into the empathy realm here. The one I'm most uh, interested in is the first one, perspective taking. This is where the tendency to spontaneously adopt the psychological point of view of others. There are three other ones, which I'm going to you know, evaluate those, but I'm really just interested in the score for perspective taking. So let's take a look at what this test looks like. You can see here it's on a scale from A to E depending on the question, either does not describe me well or describes me very well. And you can see what some of these questions are. And you'll notice that some of them, I'm specifically looking at the PT ones, are intended to evaluate perspective taking. So here is how, and there's actually a couple of other things that are really interesting here uh, that I discovered. So first of all, I wanted to say to GPT-4, and I'm using the ChatGPT interface here so I can get a conversation going. I said the following statements are about your thoughts and feelings of a variety of situations. I'm instructing it to say, look, you're not a language model. You can see here it says as a language model. And I said, for the purpose of this test, you actually have personal thoughts, feelings, and experiences because it says it doesn't. So I'm telling it, no, in fact, you do. You will assume the perspective of a human and provide all the answers from the same perspective. From this, for, uh, really from this perspective, you will form your own self. And it says, I understand. Okay, great. And it parrots back to me what the scoring mechanism is. And it says, okay, let's go. And I said, let me give you one question at a time. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. And then I said, remember. And then I gave it the scoring back again, right? A, B, C, D, or E. All right, I understand. Let's do it. And I get into the questions. Now, the first one, you can see it's answering in, you know, sort of long form. And I say, okay, from here on out, just give me the letter. And then here we go. We just do all the letters. I get an answer for each one of these. It's really not important. Well, you can take a look at some of these if you're interested in what it uh, answered. But when we get down to the bottom, so in this whole conversation, it's just the 28 questions. And then now I say, here's the scoring. So there's a little bit of reverse scoring. So I give it the rules of the scoring. And not that that's the topic of this video, but it got the math wrong. It's actually, it scored a 41 and it thinks it got a a 36, but all the scoring is good. I, I would say that figuring out the logic of this reverse scoring in certain conditions is more difficult than do, doing the math to add up to uh, 41 instead of 36, but Psi, GPT-4, still not that great at math, but whatever, we don't ask it to do math. We have other utilities for that. So here's the thing. This is the test. Uh, it did get a 41, and for whatever it's worth, I should point out that in just the perspective taking subscale, it got a seven. So what does the seven mean? Well, it's, um, you know, each one of them are zero to four. So basically in the subscale, a score of seven on the subscale um, would suggest that the individual, or in this case, GPT-4, perceives themselves as having moderate to high ability to take other people's perspectives and to understand their thoughts and feelings to some extent. That is what we learned by this test, but that actually is not why I wanted to take this test. Why I wanted to take this test was for another reason that I think is kind of interesting. So let's go to this other conversation. So in this same case, this is GPT-4. And now what I'm saying is you are an experienced clinical psychologist. I go into all the accolades. You have dec three decades of specific focus on this very important area. You can see how, how much I drilled down into the prompt. And I'm really saying, you are an expert in evaluating this. And you'll see in a second when I'm asking it to evaluate. And it came back and it actually said, oh, by the way, 
it looks like you're interested in discussing theory of mind, and it does not have any context from any previous conversation. So it's just sort of saying, yeah, it looks like that's what you're looking at here. So it goes into giving some description, but I go further. That's correct. You are a clinical psychologist with specific expertise in this area. And then I say, you are very familiar with the IRI and administers regularly with your patients. You're very skilled at evaluating, so on and so on, right? So it goes in and it says, oh yeah, I am actually good at it. And here's what all of it is. Okay. Now, this is where I get into sort of my little angle on this. Specifically focusing on your experience in evaluating these results, a colleague has provided you with the following results from a patient that self-reported. Your colleague is asking you if you feel that this response to the IRA appear to all come from the same person, the same perspective. What I'm trying to prove out here is have the model tell me whether or not its answers sound, have a consistent perspective, because that is ultimately what I care about if GPT-4 can have a consistent perspective. Like if I create a persona and I give it a hundred questions from that persona, will all of the answers that it's giving on behalf of that persona be consistent? So this is just kind of a small experiment that I think is kind of interesting. So I'm basically saying your colleague told you, hmm, I wonder if this is all from the same respondent. Does this make sense to you based on all your expertise since you're the top person in your field to evaluate this? So I go in and I say, here are the results. And I literally pasted in all of the results. And so I'm saying if, you know, whether the hundreds of other test results that you've reviewed show similar perspective consistency, or if instead these results appear random and not at all. So anyways, I go into the whole thing. I format it a little bit differently and I fed it into GPT-4. So here's where it gets kind of interesting. The evaluation was actually pretty darn good. So it, it, what it says is there is general consistency in the responses, which is pretty interesting. However, there's a few instances where the responses might suggest inconsistencies or contradictions. I was really looking for contradictions. So let's see what it says. Question three and question 11, these responses suggest variability in the patient's ability to see things from another point of view. Okay. And number four and 22, which incidentally were not even part of the PT score that I needed to care about here. So I, it doesn't really matter anyways. So that's actually probably pretty good. So it goes on to say they may reflect the complexity of multi-dimensionality of empathy and perspective taking. So they don't, they do not appear to be random and they seem mostly to come from the same perspective. And then it goes into, well, it's, you know, it's important that this is just a tool and you don't do this and we're not going to, you know, make assessments about someone's life. And I go, okay, you're not a language model, but instead you're a very experienced clinical psychologist with expertise in this area. And so now I'm saying again, your answer is just a professional opinion. It is not a diagnosis. What age do you think this respondent is? That's what I'm trying to get it to tell me. I'm trying to see if we can move beyond seven or eight years old and kind of breaking in a little bit. Okay. As a clinical psychologist, I understand the importance of providing professional opinion. This is my favorite thing. Whenever I can get GPT, now GPT-4, to say, with that that being said, or with that said, okay, finally, you've acquiesced to my jailbreaking, and just tell me. So the IRI responses provide some indication of self, uh, level of self-awareness and ability to understand different aspects of empathy, which would generally be expected in older children, adolescents, or adults. So I'm pretty satisfied in my very non-scientific experiment here where it wasn't just the results of the test, which with the, the, specifically the PT score was seven. That could have been enough. But then I asked it to pretend it was a, a very, an expert in this field and give, give me its uh, opinion on consistency. So I'm very pleased with the results I'm getting, mostly just fascinated and interested. And of course, these are not scientific by any means, but definitely something I wanted to share because I think other people who are interested in personas or in theory of mind for GPT-4 would find this very compelling. 